Aloha and welcome. I'm Jana Plant, Youth Programs Coordinator here at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Now that you've had a chance to make art while thinking about shape, let's investigate the element of shape a little further. We will review the two main categories that help us define shape, and then we'll take a look at artwork by George Brock, Lee Montague, and finally Arthur Dove. Shapes are everywhere. There are an infinite number of shapes. Shapes such as circles, triangles, rectangles, squares, and ovals are labeled regular or geometric. You might find an oval in the handle of your scissors or a ruler, the shape of a rectangle. Shapes such as mangoes, tree branches, or clouds are considered irregular or organic. Think about shapes that might be in your lunchbox. Sometimes the shape defies categorization and is a combination of both organic and geometric properties. Have a look around the classroom. Do you see any geometric shapes? This is a painting by George Brock and is from the year 1929. It is a depiction of a still life, an arrangement of everyday objects. Along with the artist Pablo Picasso, Brock was a pioneer of the art movement that came to be known as Cubism. Cubist painters rejected the idea that art should be a mirror image of nature, and so they experimented with reducing and fracturing objects into geometric shapes. They were also interested in emphasizing their canvas or painting surface, also known as the picture plane, as the flat two-dimensional area that it truly is. Brock made broad shapes that echo the flatness of the picture plane. Look for shapes in Brock's work. Where do you see them? Watch for colors too, and how they become shapes of their own. What different color shapes do you see? Try to find an apple. How many different color shapes make up that apple? Lee Bontecue was interested in science and technology and how developments in these areas affected human lives. She made this artwork in 1964, a time when outer space exploration was still quite new. She constructed this out of welded steel, canvas, saw blades, soot, and wire. What shapes do you notice first? Do you see any shapes that might represent portals to other dimensions? If you could rearrange all the shapes that make up this artwork, how might you arrange them into a new composition? Now let's look at a painting. Arthur Dove painted this painting while living in a small rural community on the shore of a tidal pond in New York State. The view across the pond included a Catholic monastery, and that monastery is the subject of this painting. Dove experimented with representations of this view in a series of 13 different paintings. What shapes do you see here? And what parts of the scene might they represent? Shape is often used as an optical guide in a composition, helping the viewer's eye move through an artwork. Notice how your attention moves through this painting. What do you see first? Where do you begin? And where do you end up?
A pattern happens when an element such as a shape repeats or echoes visually to create a sense of balance, harmony, contrast, or movement. Do you notice any shapes being used more than once? As you look at Dove's painting, do you notice any similarities between it and the Notan artwork that you just made? Have a look around your area and notice something that you see every day. Try imagining that object as made up of geometric shapes. What object did you choose? What shapes did you think of? Mahalo for joining us. We hope you enjoyed sharing quality time with the artwork today. The next time you're at the museum, check them out in person and watch for new discoveries that you might make. As you continue exploring the elements of art, be on the lookout for shapes in action all around you, from your own artwork to designs on clothing to shapes that make up buildings and the landscapes that we call home.